I was going to say it's good news that I didn't have to conduct that piece. That would have. Uh, <laughs> we were looking around, wondering. Uh, the, the old the Old Testament lesson from Deuteronomy. Uh, it's the like one of the lectionary passages for today. It's the thirtieth chapter and the last verses of this particular chapter, fifteen to twenty. Listen to God's word as it comes to us from Scripture, from the mouth of Moses as he speaks to the people of Israel. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, give your word to us this day as we ponder yours. A word of life, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was a young boy, the grocery store in our neighborhood where my mother shopped had a had a play area inside the store right near where you picked up your shopping cart to shop. And in the air was a, was a small four-horse carousel merry-go-round that you could, you could ride for free as much as you wanted. You, there was a dollhouse that you could actually walk inside and you know, look through the windows as a little kid. And, and there was a 10 by 15 enclosed room, roof and walls, had the doors with, with curtains over them. It was, a, it was a miniature movie theater. And it played cartoons of Mighty Mouse, Daffy Duck, and Chilly Willy. Moms would leave their kids there to play while they shopped. I tell you that so that you who cannot imagine leaving your child unsupervised while you go shopping in the grocery store, we'll know there once was a time when that was common practice. And I tell you so I can tell you this true story a friend of mine told me. A mother left her child playing on the rocking horse in the department store while she went and shopped. And she finished up as, as the store was about to close, came back to the children's play area to, to pick up her little boy. He refused to get off the horse. She tried to lift him up, and he bit her. He swung at a couple sales ladies who came over to try to help out. What so happened, there was a child psychologist observing these events unfolding. So he went up to the mom, introduced himself, what he did, and suggested, you know, maybe I could help with this situation. She said, by all means, you know, have at it, you know, go for it. So he went over to the little boy, bent over, and, and whispered into his ear. Immediately, the boy jumped down off the horse, ran to his mother, grabbed her hand, and said, okay, mom, we go home now. Wait a minute, the mother said to the psychologist. You must tell me what you said to him to make him obey. I said, nothing to it, the man said. I simply told him, get off that horse, you little brat, or I'll break every bone in your body. <laughs> now, as, 
as inappropriate as you and I might think that to be, don't say it worked, I, it's the kind of mindset from which you and I hear texts like this one from Deuteronomy and so many others in Scripture. The word of God from the prophet Moses sounds very much like a do this or else. And frankly, a lot of preaching over the years has been pretty similar. Obey the rules, or get ready to burn. God is the enforcer. And, and indeed, here Moses is giving Israel a picture of who they are to be a people of devotion to God and obedience to the law, those two things. This is the life they are to live, love God or perish. If they're devoted to God and being the people God calls them to be, they will be blessed. If they don't, they won't. But either we don't know or we've forgotten about those to whom Moses is speaking. These are the people who have already, already been blessed with God's favor. They, they have already been chosen by God. They've been released from slavery in Egypt. They've been kept from perishing in the Red Sea as Pharaoh chased after them. They've been saved in the wilderness with manna from heaven. God is clearly, clearly for these people. I looked at this text and I realized the ones to whom he's speaking, I said, this is not an, an if-then proposition. If you get these laws right, I'll let you in. God didn't give the Israelites the Ten Commandments first and ask them to ante up and see how they do. God started loving, redeeming, and saving the Israelites long before he ever handed them those tablets. The Israelites hearing these words are about to cross the river into the promised land. They're hearing them from the lips of Moses. They don't know in the next chapter or the next breath or the next day, whenever he said it, Moses was not going to go into that land with them. He was going to stay where he was. He was finished. He was going to die and be buried there. And he was saying, you know, guys, here it is. It's kind of last chance to make it clear. And indeed, it is a, a warning, but in essence, these words are clearly intended to be a blessing to the people of Israel. Israel, your future prosperity depends on the choices you will make. Will you embrace the God who led you to this point, who led you to the banks of this river, to the edge of this promised land? Will you, will you embrace God and God's ways, or will you depart from them, abandon God? Now, I don't, know how, I don't know how many of you, uh, you know, like read through the book of Deuteronomy with regularity. I, I'm just saying, it's not, it's not the first thing I do at devotionals in the morning, you know. It, I mean, it, it is just, it's packed with rules, laws, and regulations. But we hear in this summation here in the 30th chapter, these, these are not the rules of a ruthless dictator. They're not the threats of a cosmic sadist who just comes up with a whole mess of rules and watch us squirm as we try to figure out whether we can perform under them. They're not the warnings of a dispassionate judge. These are the admonitions of a loving parent. You know, those kind of warnings you give your kid, you know, if you poke the cat, you're going to get scratched. I mean, those warnings have little to do with justice or judgment and everything to do with compassion and care and well-being, well-doing in life. I don't, I don't hear this passage as a threat. It, it is God's love pleading with Israel. It's an invitation to the ways of justice and righteousness, to the life that God has always envisioned 
Israel might be able to have. It's God saying, please, 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 for your own good, listen to me. How many times have those words come across a parent's lips? (laughs) Please, for your own good, listen. And, and in recent years, I've officiated at way too many funerals of young adults who've died of overdoses, who didn't have ears to hear or listen. God's law is given as a gift. It's life's little instruction book, God's gift to help you and me get from this life what it means to truly be alive. How many times have you ever bought something that you, you got to put together in order to use it, a piece of furniture, you know, shelving toys, uh, you know, some tool for the shop or, or you, you technology or something, you know, and so you leap into it, certain, you know, oh, I know how to, I know how to, and you get to the end and you got two bolts left over, and you go, uh-oh, <laughs> you know, I better find out where these go before I sit down on this chair. Following instructions is always the better way. So it is, Moses says, for you to have life. I love the way this text says it. Choose life and live in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. Choose life. It's not a stern command. It's a heartfelt invitation and an earnest plea. Choose life, not not death. Some some of you may have seen, some of you may actually watch the, the TV series The Walking Dead. Uh, a niece and nephew gave the season to me, and, and, and one, one show was pretty much enough. I, you know, <laughs> I, it, you know if, if, you, if you haven't seen it, there's these, these walking dead zombie humans with, you know, open wounds and pallid skin, and I, you know, well, it's, I mean, it's a TV horror series. It, it's, and it depicts the, the living dead, the walking dead, if, if there ever was such a thing. Well, you know, the Bible has a walking dead series, too. But the Bible portrays them differently. In the Bible, the walking dead actually look just like everyone else. They dress like everyone else. They work like everyone else. They marry. They have children. They have friends. They have careers. Many have a great deal of fun, but they're still the walking dead. They are living dead because their lives are only for themselves. According to Scripture, real living is only found in relationship with God. And relationship with God always, always leads to living in right relationship with others. Moses isn't isn't talking so much about a choice between a physical life and a physical death, but between a meaningful life and a meaningless one. A life of promise and freedom and joy and hope instead of emptiness and boredom and being captive to brokenness. I mean, he's he's very clear. You can live with God, be faithful to him, and it will be life for you. Or you can live for your own, it will be death. Your choice. Choose now. Remember years ago reading a book titled Through the Valley of the Kwai. It's uh, written by uh, Ernest Gordon. And in it, he's recalling the hellish existence he suffered in a Japanese POW camp in World War II. The guards were brutally cruel. Diseases of every kind were rampant. And suspicion was just thriving among the prisoners between each other. Every prisoner was out for himself. Dog, eat, dog, word, protect, you know. Loneliness, despair, daily death was like a blanket over the camp until a prisoner named Dusty Miller 
a devout Christian, began to care for the other prisoners in need, to bathe and cleanse their wounds, to hold them when they were dying, to cool their brow when they were fevered. And Ernest Gordon writes this in his book, death, death was still with us, no doubt about that, but we were being slowly freed from its destructive grip. We were seeing for ourselves the sharp grand contrast between the forces that make for life and those that make for death. Selfishness, hatred, jealousy, anger, greed, all things in the commandments, we're all anti-life. Love, self-sacrifice, mercy, creative faith, on the other hand, were the essence of life and turned our mere brutal existence into living, into living in its truest sense even in the awfulest of circumstances. Ernest Gordon, an agnostic, came to faith in that camp. He became a Presbyterian minister, dean of the chapel at Princeton University. Somebody coming out of the 830 service told me he was dean when he was attending Princeton. Gordon came to faith because Dusty Miller chose to live, chose life not death, chose life in spite of death, chose life in the face of death. The ways of God and obedience to God's law, of compassion and neighborliness. Please, please God, please with Israel, choose life. Please live life as I intended it. Here's how, follow my law, learn my ways, otherwise it will surely be destruction and despair and death. You may be alive, but you will be the walking dead, the living dead. Please, my children, choose life. And so it was the same with Jesus, that son of Israel, who said, choose life. Follow me, follow my ways, choose my life at work in you, my life at work through you, my life that you might live, and by seeing your life, the world might live too. May it be so. Amen.